Hi guys. Okay, so this is my review of Whitey, the United States of America versus James J. Bulger, directed by Joel Berlinger, master documentarian. This is the guy who did the Paradise Lost series with his uh, partner Bruce Sanofsky. Uh They also did another great documentary called Brothers Keeper. Um, I urge you to watch anything by this guy. He is so, so good at what he does. Um, this time he's gone solo with this movie, and boy, you know, one thing about this guy that I really, really, really love is, um, he has a way of getting you, like, right into the, right into the setting of the place. Like, with the Paradise Lost movies, uh, about Damien Eccles, the West Memphis Three, um, you know, Arkansas, you know, you're right there, you know, he gets you in there and gets you really getting a feel for the place. And this movie uh, took place in Boston, South Boston specifically. Uh, it's about um, Irish mob crime boss, Whitey James Bulger, who ran rampant in South Boston. This guy terrorized the community for decades. Um, he murdered, he, uh, this guy was into racketeering, drug running, everything you can imagine, everything criminal you can imagine, this guy had a hand in. And he just absolutely terrorized the community and basically was given a free pass to, to, um, you know, just, um, do whatever he wanted to do with total impunity by the FBI. Um, okay, so when the movie starts out, um, uh, and this was really, 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 I mean, so many things about this this story are tragic, but this one in particular, it started out with this guy speaking. His name, I think his name was Stephen Rakes. Forgive me if I'm getting that wrong. I think his name was Stephen Rakes. I'll check it and uh, make if I make a mistake, I'll put it in the info below. But anyway, he was telling a story about how um, he and his wife had opened up this um, this small liquor store in South Boston, and uh, I don't know when this was. I guess this was a few decades ago. And, um, so anyway, one day he gets a visit from Mr. Bulger and one of his henchmen. And, um, so they walk into the place and they tell him, uh, people in this neighborhood have been complaining, uh, that you opened up your store and they sent us here to kill you. Uh, but we've decided that, uh, we'd rather be partners with you. So we're going to be your partners. And this guy is like, <laughs> obviously he's shaking, he's like shaking in his boots and thinking, oh my God, what's going on here? But. This guy had balls, because he said, no, you're, you're not going to be my partners. But then he said, this guy, Whitey, this guy looked at him, and he was, like, gritting his teeth, and he said, you don't understand. We're going to be your partners. And his little um, one-year-old child was uh, on the floor at the time or something, and he said that Whitey uh, bent down and picked up this child and said, you know, it really would be a shame if this kid grew up without a father. So, I mean, basically, I guess he just had to go along with it. What choice did he have, right? And this is just one story. This guy did this to so many people. And this was probably, you know, the, the, one of the more benign of his crimes, uh, if that word can be used. Um, like I said, this guy was a murderer. This guy was a monster, okay? And uh, impacted so many people's lives in that area, okay? Um... And why I say it's, uh, I mentioned this guy specifically, is that, um, okay, so this, this guy Whitey was allowed to run rampant because of his connections in the FBI. He had this buddy in the FBI, he was a high up FBI agent named John Connolly, who grew up in his neighborhood and was kind of, I guess, in awe of him, and probably had some kind of hero worship of him and some vicarious desire to be him you know, and live that criminal lifestyle, but he went the other way and joined the FBI, but I guess he still had those, you know, those desires. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, he would tip him off whenever there was going to be like an indictment or a charge or a murder investigation was going on. He would tell him everything. He would feed him all this information. And in return, uh, Whitey would pay these guys off, all these FBI people, uh, people in law enforcement, I mean, this guy was paying off people. He was saying he was giving them envelopes with as much as 25000 50000 bucks per payment. This guy was, you know, paying people to give him information, although they were claiming that he was an informant. The FBI was claiming that he was an informant for them. And um, that's why he was allowed to operate with all this uh, impunity. Uh, but Bulger is saying, no, I was never an informant for these guys. They were giving me information. I was giving them information. Um 
So anyway, uh, finally, like, this had gone on for decades. This guy, had, this crime boss had, like, terrorized his community. He's doing whatever he wants, um, running the place. Uh, but finally, some other guys, I guess, came in, uh, you know, leadership changed, and they were finally going to charge him. And so this guy Connolly tipped him off, of course, and he took off, fled the country, and was gone for about 16 years. I don't know where he fled to, but he took off. Uh, uh, but they found him, and they brought him back to trial, finally, all these decades later. So all these people who he had terrorized and whose lives he had affected by murdering their family members, whatever, uh, they were finally going to get the chance to testify at this trial against him. And uh, this guy, Stephen Rakes, was one of the people who was really, really, really looking forward to getting on the stand and testifying and looking him in the eye and telling him, you know, nailing this guy, being part of the, of the, um, you know, the witnesses who would, you know, nail this guy and put him in jail where he belongs. So anyway, he was set to testify, but for some reason, some reason, he was cut from the witness list. And then a few hours later, he was found dead. He was found murdered. And, um, at the end of the movie, uh, they were saying that, uh, the cause of death was determined as one of his business partners had put cyanide in his coffee. The guy was found like seven miles from his home on the side of the road. Cyanide from his coffee? Okay, whatever. But, um, yeah, so this guy, you know, not only did he not get the chance to, to testify against him and get his satisfaction in some small way from what had happened to him, uh, the guy ended up being murdered, you know, and... Um, there were just so, so many stories. Uh, now, one thing about this movie is it's, it's a little bit confusing because there are so many characters, so much going on in this movie. I mean, this guy was operating for decades. You can imagine all the, all the stuff that was going on. And, um, John Connolly was not the only FBI agent, uh, who was, you know, on his payroll and, and who, uh, you know, was corrupt. I mean, the corruption in the FBI in Boston. And I'm sure it can't be the only city, right? Uh, it was just like, it was, you know, it, it was all over the place. So, you know, here are these guys. They're supposed to be protecting people. They're supposed to be, you know, going after these guys. And in the meantime, for money, they're turning a blind eye to all the shit that's going on. I mean, this guy strangled women. You know, this guy would just execute people. Um, you know, like I said, he was terrorizing people, shaking them down. Uh, you know, it was just absolutely ridiculous is, you know, the, the least of the adjectives that I can think of. Uh, but, you know, this, this guy Berlinger, he really, really, really knows how to tell a story. And, um, like I said, get into, get into the, um, you know, like, into the feel of the place really, really brings you there. And I could really, really feel what it was Boston, what it would have been like to be in Boston at that time. And, and, uh, you know, what it's like now, the after effects of all this, right? So anyway, uh, yeah, and uh, Bulger's defense team uh, played a really big role in this because they were the ones who were talking about all the corruption in the FBI and they found out all this stuff. And uh, I'm not quite sure how that fits into his defense. Uh, you know, he did what he did still, you know. Even though there's all this corruption going on, you can't take away all the crimes that this guy committed. Um, I don't know. But um, anyway, this guy Bulger's 83. He's in jail right now. Um, obviously never going to get out. Um and, uh, this guy's appealing, too. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, it was just an incredible, incredible documentary. You can never go wrong by watching one of this guy's movies. Um, so extremely, extremely, extremely well-made film. Um, you'll be, you'll just be sitting there going, oh my God, you know, when you just, you know, when you find out all this stuff that, that went on during that period and, you know, hear the stories of all the victims and, you know, just these fucking bastards in the FBI who just, you know, let all this go on. You know, it's disgusting, right? But, you know, that's the truth. <clears throat> in every major organization, there is corruption. And, you know, why should law enforcement be any different, right? People are human, you know, uh, no matter what they do and, you know, where they work. And, you know, they're going to bring those personality traits to their job. And, you know, some of these guys, 
you know, they're FBI agents, but deep down inside, I think they just, they, they want to be criminals, and these guys basically were just another member of this guy's gang. We're just, you know, additional members of this guy's gang, basically. Um, so anyway, awesome, awesome film. Two major thumbs up. The only thing that I will, I will say is it's a little bit hard to follow because there is so, so much going on. So many players in this, in this story, but definitely, definitely worth checking out. And you will see it. Uh, it's, um, CNN Films. I didn't even know that CNN had a film division, but I guess they do. So this was produced uh, by CNN Films and Magnolia Pictures. So it's going to come out in the theaters, and I'm sure you will see it, you know, on Netflix and all that stuff. So check it out. Definitely check it out. Awesome, awesome movie. Whitey Bulger, United States of America. United States of America versus James J. Bulger. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so I will be uh, back later on uh, today with another couple of reviews, seeing another couple of movies today, uh, another true crime one as well. And, uh, yeah, I hope you come back and check them out. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you later.